bit is unrelenting.
whispers of your heart and your passion. It's pouring. Yeah. Your love is deep. Your love is wide and it covers us. Your love is fierce. Your love is strong. It's furious. Your love is sweet. Your love is wild. It's waking hearts to life. The Father loves and sends His Son. down his life for all he lavishes his love upon us he calls us now his sons and daughters his reaching love. his love is deep his love is wide and it covers us his love is fierce his love is strong it's furious his love is sweet his love is wild it's waking hearts to life your love is deep your love is wide and it covers up his love is fierce his love is strong it's furious his love is sweet his love is wild it's waking hearts to life you're waking my heart to life You're waking me to life With your love With your love With your love Your love is deep, your love is wide and it covers us Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it's furious Your love is sweet, your love is wild And it's waking hearts to life Your love is deep, your love is wide and it covers us Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it's furious your love is sweet, your love is wild It's waking hearts to life Come on, how many of you been awoken? Waken by His love His love is deep, His love is wide And it covers us Your love is fierce, Your love is strong It's furious Your love is sweet, Your love is wild It's waking hearts to life Your love is 
Your love is strong, it's furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild. It's awaking hearts to life. The Father loves, they sent His Son. His life for all. He lavishes His love upon us. And when He calls you now, His sons and daughters, He's reaching out. Love is deep, your love is wide, and love is love. Love is fierce, and love is strong. Waking hearts to life. Your love is deep, your love is wide, and it covers us. Your love is fierce, your love is strong, yet furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wide, it's waking hearts to life. talking about going deep look at that on the screen your love is deep his love is deep amen I wanted to look at a scripture real quickly and uh, you can put this on the screen if you can back there first John 4 16 in the NIV if you would first John 4 16 in the NIV just got it on my heart during that song praise God 1 John 4, 16, it says, And so we know and we rely on the love God has for us. I mean, I know you can rely on the love God has for you. Amen. You can rely on the love. We know it and we rely on the love that God has for us. For God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in Him. Amen. So when you're relying on God, you're relying, say you uh, believe in God for your needs to get met. You're believing God for your body to be healed. You believe in God for provision to show up. All that you need to do is say, I rely on the love of God. Amen. He'll never fail you. He'll never forsake you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. 
I will always be with you. I will always perform what I said I will perform because I love you. Amen. Knowing God loves you, it makes it easy to receive from God. A lot of times we talk about love, and we've been talking a lot about love. We've been talking about love in the morning. And uh, the love of God is the revelation we need to get. A lot of time we preach love that we need to love God and love others. Well, we do, but first you've got to know that God loves you. If you don't know that God loves you, you won't be able to love anybody else. Because He is love. Connecting to Him makes you able to love other people. Amen. And just meditating on that love and relying. I love that in the NIV it words it like this. Rely on the love of God. I'm relying on God's love for me. Amen. Amen. He loves me. He's always for me. He's never against me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jim, come on up here. Praise God. Off of that scripture right there. I just feel like we, we're going to pray. You mind if we pray for you? Praise the Lord. I just feel like we're going to pray and agree with Jim right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to lift up Jim, and we're going to rely on the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, rejoice with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heal. Relying on the love of God. I know. I know that I know. Say, I know. Everybody say, I know. Say it like you really know it. Say, I know. God loves me. I don't know if he loves you, but he loves me. <laughs> he loves all of us. Amen. All of us. Praise the Lord. That's a personal revelation. Though, and it makes it easy to receive. Faith is a receiver. Amen. Grace is the giver. The Bible says it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And faith is only receiving what grace is offering. And if you don't know that grace is giving, it makes it hard to receive. But if you know God is the giver of all good things, if you know that Jesus went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed of thee, put that on real fast, Stephon, Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38. Somebody else may be believing in here. Look at this scripture. It's one of the best in the whole Bible. You can do this in the New King James or King James. Praise the Lord. I don't know how the NIV words this one. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all. Say all. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Amen. So everybody you saw Jesus heal was oppressed of the devil. Wasn't God's will. Wasn't the plan of God. Wasn't the great master plan. It was these people were oppressed of the devil devil or you can look even, even say the fall of man sin entered into the world and men fell into sin and then the, the whole fall of man came but that was all the result of the devil it sickness is not of God never been from God never will be from God your will be done on earth as it is in how many I know he, sickness is not in heaven so you know it's not God giving it to anybody on this earth amen so this says right here Jesus Holy Spirit and God all in the same scripture going around doing good and healing all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, your words are alive, living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. We thank you. It penetrates into our hearts. And we thank you, Father God, we get revelation knowledge from it. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, the eyes of our heart, enlightened that we may know the hope of our calling, the riches of our inheritance in the saints, the incomparable great power for us who believe. And we thank you, Father. Give you glory for it in advance. We rejoice at your word as one who found great treasure in advance, believing we're going to get revelation tonight. Hallelujah. We rejoice at your word in advance. Thank you, Father. 
Glory be to God. We magnify the word. We rejoice at your word as one who hit the power ball. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In advance, hallelujah, the word is alive. The word is good. It changes us, takes us from glory to glory, transforms our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. You can turn the lights on, Stefan. Praise God. Um, tonight's special night, praise the Lord. And uh, very special, special to me, special to Danielle and I, and I know the whole church, amen. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's like when, you, when a brother leaves home, you know, you, I'm, I remember when my brother went to the Air Force, we all had to get together and saw him off, amen, and we had a big old party and ate a bunch of food. Don't preach long because there is, I saw some good desserts back there already that I wouldn't mind going to, and uh, there's some chocolate lasagna back there. Praise the Lord. There's some Butterfinger pies back there. Hundred of bush. Hey, huh? Glory be to God. There is, I saw some key lime pie. I saw some Butterfinger. I said Butterfinger pie. I've already, I saw two of them back there. Uh, we're going to double up on that, praise God. And uh, enough uh, dessert back there. If we, we, what we want to do is be a blessing to Roland and Amy and the family. They've been a blessing to us. Amen. Amen. Bringing fire. Amen. Bringing encouragement. Always a servant's heart. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, the card I got him said goodbye. And then you open it up, it says really bad bye on, for us. But, you know, we, we hate to see him go. We know God's directing his steps, ordering his path. And uh, been coming to prayer at 5.30 in the morning and been preaching to us at 5.30 in the morning. Been sharing with us too. And I know it's going to be good tonight because I've already heard some of it unless it changed. Praise the Lord. And it's going to be a good word and because uh, God's word is good. Amen. Brother got saved a year and a half, two years ago and is rocking for Jesus. And I don't see him stopping. Amen. We're going to continue to lift him up in prayer. All of the church family. Amen. It is our brother. He was born here. Amen. <laughs> he was born in this house. Amen. Born again here in this house. And uh, um, he's not ours, though. He's God's. Sometimes people take ownership of people and you don't own people. Amen. Amen. He is God's, and God will direct his steps and order his path. We're believing he directs them right back toward this direction. Amen. But if he doesn't, we know God's got his very best in the future, and his very best is in front of him. Amen. Just continue to stay in the Word, stay in faith, and continue doing what you're doing right now. Nothing's got to change. You stay in the Word. Young E. Cho, get over in his church. He's going to Young E. Cho's church in, North, in North, uh, South Korea. Amen. That's going to be awesome. I think there's about a million members there, 800,000. Yeah, praise the Lord. I think, show them how to run. Amen. Just show them. Just get in there and start running. Praise God. I don't know if they run in that sort of South Korea or not, but you can get over there and just begin, start them, start them off. And they just like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Young E. Cho. Amen. Largest church in the world is where he'll be going, so he's in good hands. Praise God. They're doing great things. So God is good. I've turned this whole thing over to him, and uh, I'm just going to ask him to come on up, and then we'll pray over them at the end, and then we'll have dessert with them and fellowship. If you want to do a Holy Ghost handshake, that would be a blessing. Amen. I mean, I know what a Holy Ghost handshake is. It's a handshake with something in it. Oh, man. People, just be a blessing. Amen. Send them off right. Amen. Don't send them off just with a hug and a, uh, a, a pie. Amen. Go ahead and bless them. Praise the Lord. Be, be, be led on your blessing. Praise God. Brother Roland, I've never, uh, Silguero, Amen. Praise the Lord. I always try to read it how it's spelled, and I mess up. Praise God. Roland, come on up here and be a blessing to the people. Give it up for Roland. Praise the Lord.
thank you for. We thank you for the blood that you have released into our bodies, Father God, for we have been healed by the blood. We have been healed by the blood. Every chain has been broken by the blood. There is nothing holding us back, Father God, nothing holding us back. We are free to run. We are free to run, free to run, free to dance. We are free to do all things. Thank you, Father, for your word, your word, your word. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, Father God, for it is your love, Father God, that keeps us together in the midst of the storm so we continue to run our race. Thank you, Father. It is your love that keeps us together. Your love. Your love that keeps no record of wrongdoing. Your love, Father God, that blots out all our transgressions. Your love that conquers all things. Your love, Father God. Your love. Your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. We saturate in your love, Father God. We dwell in that love. That love. We're drowning in your love. Drowning in your love. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your love. And tonight, Father God, it is all Holy Spirit. All Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over. None of me, all of him. None of me, all of him. Thank you, Father. I submit to him. I'm willing and obedient to him right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the word that you have tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, whew, I was about to go for an hour. I had to stop there. <laughs> Got used to the whole hour thing. <laughs> yeah, so tonight I message that I've had really something burning in me for about two weeks now. You know, just, whew, I'm excited to talk to you all about it. And it really took me back to when I was first, before I was born, really, you know, and born again. Not born coming out of my mama, but, <laughs> but you know, when I was first born again here, you know, and just running, you know, running, you know. And what came to my heart was, actually, what started all this was I took a PT test and my run wasn't as good as it usually was. And so I went and bought a book. I was like, you know what, I'm going to prove all my running. So I went and I was going to study all this material, how to improve your running body, you know, and run better and faster and, you know, how to prevent injuries while you're running, you know, because the Army just believes in one speed and that's fast. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't care about if you stay healthy or not. Like, you got TRICARE, you know, free insurance, you're good. <laughs> but uh, so I went and I got, I got this book, you know, I just want to learn how to run faster and stay healthy. You know, improve my run. And while I bought that book and I was coming back home with it, you know, the Lord said, how about you check how you're running the inside? You know, because outside exercise profits little. You know, inside is where it profits much. You know, so that kind of got me on this. You know, I was just like, wow. So I started reading this book. I got so much spiritual knowledge and revelation off this book. It's a worldly book, but everything I was doing, I was cross-referencing with the Word, with the Word. I always got to check everything with the Word. You know, you can't believe everything you see, <laughs> you know, so I was always cross referencing with the word, and I just got so much revelation and knowledge, and had me fired up on it, really, so it took me back, to really, to when I was first saved, you know, me and my wife, beautiful wife in the front right there, I acknowledge her, I honor her, love you, beautiful like always, <laughs> but, uh, so, before we got saved, you know, y'all heard a piece of my testimony, you know, PTSD, you know, she noticed it way before I did, you know, she noticed it when I came back from the first deployment. She's like, you're a little different. And us men were like, nah, I got it. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You know, we, we, we don't like to admit that there's something wrong with us because we feel like we're macho, man. We can take care of everything, you know. And uh, so I was like, nah, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, just, just leave me alone, you know. Because when I first came back, you know, it was just little things that would get under my skin, you know, little things, just little tiny things. And that would make me just explode or tick. And, um... So I left for the second deployment, came back, you know, a little worse, you know, led to uh, us getting separated for close to a year and a half. And uh, towards the end of that separation, you know, I was in the emergency room three times a day for about three months straight, you know, and throughout this whole separation, I'm receiving treatment, you know. At first, I tried to conquer this PTSD with my own power, wasn't able to, so I reached out to professionals, you know, people that had doctor's degree and everything, and it still wasn't really getting better, you know. It was actually getting worse, you know, and it got to the point to where it was just, I couldn't take it no more, you know, couldn't take it, you know, I was in the hospital all the time, and so she saw that my health was going drastically down, so she came back, she's like, you know what, I'm still your wife, I love you, and I thank, I thank you for that, I tell her every day, I thank you for the love that you have in you, you know, that, that love that, she doesn't care what you do to her, you know, she's going to be there no matter what, so she came back, and she was with me, and she decided to bring the family back, and, you know, while we're going through all this, it's just, it was getting worse and worse. I got back to Texas. I never forget this. We got back to Texas, and Patrick was well. Got me thinking about this earlier. Was Patrick was talking about you know how you can look mighty and healthy on the inside, 
but totally dead on the in, on, I mean, on the inside. Let me rephrase that. You know, you could look healthy and totally strong and everything on the outside, but on the inside, you could truly be just dead, you know? And it, it took me back to this moment, you know, was when I was with my brother in Corpus Christi. We were driving down, and the car was going about 90 miles an hour in his Mustang. And um, I just couldn't take no more. Stress levels were hitting. Anxiety was hitting. PTSD, boom, boom. Heart was going, going. And at this point, it had already been going on for like, three years, you know, so I was just like, I can't take this no more, you know, and I was about to just open that door, I was close, I had the handle, I was about to open that door and jump out of the car going 90 miles an hour, you know, and so he drove me to the hospital, and, you know, they already knew, hey, yeah, we see your records, PTSD, and it was just, it's true, you know, you could look so mighty on the outside, so physically fit, but I was really on the verge of de- dying, I really was on the inside. You know, I was on the verge of death. You know, I was on my probably cl- pretty, pretty close to my deathbed, to be honest with you. You know, but coming here just revived me, you know, revived. You know, well, once I said, Jesus, you know, you are, <laughs> you are Lord and Savior of my life right there and then, you know. Oh, man, my life changed radically, you know, radically. You know, doctors couldn't believe it, <laughs> you know, because doctors told me it was going to take three to four years to reintegrate me into this world. And they said, you still wouldn't even be 100%. You may get up to 80%. You know, they, they, there was no guarantee behind nothing. They couldn't guarantee me nothing, you know. And when I went back and I told them, I'm doing fine. I'm good, you know, after I was saved, you know. And they were like, well, what are you doing? I was like, Jesus lives in me. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know, and they're like, well, I guess you got some type of, uh, what do they call that? Uh, it's like when they give you sugar pill, what is uh, that word? Uh, placebo. Yeah, you probably just got some type of placebo, just had that feel-good moment right now. And I was like, whatever. I kind of walked on, and I went back. Actually, I went back like about a year later, and I was like, I'm still happy. I'm still joyful. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, but with that being said, though, the moment I just say, Jesus is Lord, and I believed in my heart, you know, confessed my mouth, you know, that, you know, God, that he died, and God raised him on the third day, all that, you know, the enemy still tried to attack. He still tried to attack, you know, but I just thank God for the setup that he had for me once I was saved. I just thank him for the setup, the path that he directed for me, because as soon as I was saved, I went to Bible college. I learned immediately who I was in Christ, my authority in Christ, you know, my authority, the believer's authority. I learned the love of God, you know, all that stuff that just, that stuff I was able to apply immediately, you know, and I think because there was only really three scriptures I really stood on, like, the first six months of my salvation. You know, that's <laughs> the only ones that had, like, truly deeply in my heart that I just kept with me, and that was Galatians 2.20, 2 Corinthians 5.17, and Isaiah 54 or 55, verse 4 to 3 to 4. You know, and those was the ones that I just confessed. Every time I would wake up in the middle of the night with some type of anxiety or panic attack, you know, it was just a suspense. Sometimes it would scare her, you know, because I'd wake up and just, oh, hey, you know, and, She'd be like, whoa, what's going on? And then I would just get up. As soon as I felt that attack coming, I would get up and just start, just start confessing the word. No, no, greater is he. Greater is he who was in me. Greater is he who was in me. Greater is he who was in me. You know, I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. I have been healed. I have been healed. The old me no longer is this. So the person you're trying to attack right now is not the same person. He's stronger than the person I used to be. You know, and I, I would just confess those things, greater, greater. And I got bold with him. You know, I would open my front door. I'd be like, you get out of this house right now. Yeah. You know, because I started learning authority. I, I got authority over this. Thing. I could tell him where to go. Yeah. I could tell him get out. I could cast him out into the sea, and he shall never return. Oh. So I would get bold, and I would say, you know what? You get out of my house. Get out of my body. Get out of this body. You don't belong in this body. You don't belong in this body. I would just speak to my body. I would speak to my body, you know, and I would just cast him out, cast him out. I said, get bold with him. You know, I got bold, really bold. You know, really, really bold. And it was just amazing the results I saw. <laughs> results. There's always results when you stand on the Word of God. There's always results when you stand on the Word of God. You know, and that's what I'm saying. It just, it was amazing. You know, it, now it wasn't something that I got just by doing it one time. I had to continuously do it. You know, and that, I see a lot of people, like, they give up on the Word because they try it one time and they didn't get the miracle they were hoping for. I'm like, well, God doesn't do miracles all, you know, he does miracles, but you're not going to get a miracle from God every day of your life, you know what I mean? And I told him, like, you got to hold fast to your confession, the reason why he says that, you got to hold fast to your confession, hold fast, you know what I mean? So I just kept on, every time an attack would come, no, I know who I am, you got to know who you are, 
you got to know who you are. you got to know the authority you have. And it all starts with the mindset. you got to have the correct mindset. And that's what I want tonight. Actually, that's, there it is. <laughs> a runner's mind. So today is a runner's mind. You all know I like to run. So, <laughs> so today is on a runner's mind. That's actually, I was going to go different ways with it. You know, at first I was like, you know, I'm going to go with building a runner, you know, building, building blocks of a runner. And I was like, just run with it. And I was going to put just run. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with a runner's mind because it all starts before you could teach an athlete anything, you got to make sure they're in the right mindset. So you can't teach an athlete nothing before fixing the way he's thinking. You know, you got to miss, you got to figure out how he's thinking, correct it, and that way his mind is set on the right thing, and now you can start directing him where you need him to go. So you work on the man before you work on the athlete. So, this, you know, that's one thing I've learned, you know, through people that I've studied, studied with leadership, you know, coaches that I've followed, you know, studied their philosophies of how, you know, they want all these championships and everything, you know, and every single one of them says, we do not touch a ball at all for the first month or two, you know, of training camp. It's just ma- making sure their mindset is correct. You know, everyone has that same mindset, the same goal, the same vision, and everyone is helping out one another, you know, just making sure the mindset is there. So that's what it's really – you got brain up there. You got connective tissue, nervous system, muscles, energy system. Main two I'm going to focus on tonight is going to be the brain and the nervous system. The brain and the nervous system. Because the nervous system is actually part, you know, brain and nervous system work together. You know, 99% of your nervous system is in your brain, you know. So that's what we're going to talk about, those two things, because they go hand in hand. But so, yeah, it's just having the correct mindset, correct mindset. And where I want to go with this is actually I'll tell you about what mindset is. It blew my mind when I actually looked it up. Such a simple word, just, like, wow, that, you know, that little bit meant all that. You know, and mindset is, mind is the organ receiving God's thoughts. So your mind is the organ that is receiving God's thoughts, you know. So it's, there's other thoughts that come in with it, though, and that's why he says take captive of every thought, every thought. So you got to take captive of every thought because this is the most vital organ that you have that produces what you put out, is what you're taking in. The thoughts that come into your body will affect what you put out. So you got to take captive of every thought. you got to keep what is of God and kick out what is not of God. And speak to it. Don't kick it out without saying nothing. No, no. You, you speak to that thought. You, know, no, you don't belong here because it's got to come out of your mouth. If it doesn't come out of your mouth, there's no power behind it. It's just a thought. <laughs> so it's got to come out of your mouth before there's power behind it. So mind, again, is the organ receiving God's thoughts through faith or the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the worldly experiences. So that's pretty good right there. When set, I like set. The definition of set is to stand on or to stand in a specified place or position. So when you're set on something, you're standing from a position. You know, we stand from a position of victory. And that's what you got to know and understand is that you don't stand from any other position than victory because there's victory in Jesus. He is King Jesus. You know, he is King Jesus. You know, God has overcome the world already. You know, so if he's overcome it, then now all you do is just win. You stand from victory. You fight from victory. So you never try to get something. You believe you have it already. That is what faith is. You know, that's what every word in the Bible is. You know, all, what, thousand plus pages in here is all by faith. All by faith. Every single word in it is by faith. By faith. You know, so that's what mindset is. is your vital organ, your mind really standing in a position or a specified place. You know, and we stand from a higher place. You know, a higher place than what your, what your mind can even imagine of. He says, because his thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher than yours. So, You'll never know the thoughts that God has for you. If it scares you, if it shakes you a little bit by a thought that you get that he's given you, I would do it. I'm just saying, by faith, just do it. Just do it. Take that word and run with it. Run with it. You know, and that's another thing I looked into was when you look at champions, they never think about losing. Uh, There's never a thought in them about losing. You know, prime example, I I see Jack back there. I don't like to say this, but the New England Patriots. <laughs> New England Patriots, when that magnificent comeback they had, you know, down by what, 28 points, 25? Never thought about losing. Never. It wasn't even 
in them about losing. They were like, we got this. We got this. Come on. We got it. We got it. And they did what they had to shut them out the second half. <laughs> Came back, you know. As I'm saying, champions never think about losing. Never think about losing. So, whew, glory to God. So, yeah, we're going to be on here about running. We're going to run soon. I'm going to get I'm going to. I talked to Jim. I told Jim you're running tonight. <laughs> I told Jim you're running tonight. So, yeah. So, the another thing I got was the mindset. We're talking about mindset. We're talking about the brain. We're talking about mind. The mindset always comes before the position. Your mindset always comes before the position. Before you can take position and everything, you got to have your mind set on it. You got to say, you know what? I am going to stand on this word. I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to be moving. Whatever comes my way, whatever circumstance comes my way, I say, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Because it is the love of God. We're talking about the love of God. It is the love of God that is going to keep all things together in the midst of the storm. It is the love of God. It even says in the word. It is the ligaments of the body. The love is the ligaments of the body. It's what keeps the body together, you know? And so that's what the love of God actually. Let's go there real quick. Let's go to Ephesians 4.16. Ephesians 4.16. Ephesians 4.16, we'll go with the New King James Version. Ephesians 4.16, and there it is. <laughs> so it says, From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So we are all the body of Christ here. You know, people ask or people wonder, how is this little church doing such big things? How is this little church doing such big things? And I can tell you why, because we got a strong connective tissue. You know, we got a strong, everyone here is always looking out for one and always, what do you need? What do you need? What can I do for you? You know, just always in love here, you know. And that's one thing is, you know, faith is your muscle. You know, and muscle recovers a lot faster than connective tissue. So connective tissue takes a lot longer to produce, to get to strengthen, you know. It gets a lot longer to, it takes, a lot, it takes about three to four months really to strengthen a connective tissue. It's just a little bit, you know. So that's why when a lot of, you see a lot of bodybuilders, they'll go, they'll push their muscles, push their muscles, and they will ignore, they're doing all these big complex lifts, I mean simple lifts, that they forget about their connective tissue, their joints, their ligaments, their tendons. You know, they're not strengthening those that their muscles get too big for their connective tissue that they start getting injured. You know, that's why you see a lot of them with bands and sleeves on them because they've injured either the shoulder or a knee from squatting because that connective tissue was not strong enough to support all the muscle, you know. So, yes, we got big faith here, but we also got a strong connective tissue. That's why I've seen some people weigh about 165 pounds, outlift someone that weighed about 300 pounds. Why? Because they had a strong connective tissue, you know. So, and that connective tissue... When you get an injury, this is what I was on the other day, and it's awesome because when you get an injury, I want to ask the guy, a medic actually in my company, and I asked him, I was like, why does connective tissue, you know, what's the difference between connective tissue and muscles, like the recovery process? Like, why does it take a lot longer for connective tissue, your ligaments and all that, you know, why does it take a lot longer for it to recover than a muscle? He was all, well, it's easy. I'll put it to you this way, is the blood flow. Your muscles have a continuously blood flow going through them. Continuously blood, continuously there's blood flowing through your muscles, you know. But your connective tissue, your joints and ligaments and cartilage, all that stuff has a very, very limited supply of blood going towards it. You know, so that's why when you go and you get injured, when you get like a sprained ankle or you get some swelling in your knee or, you know, that's why they do, have you ever heard of acupuncture therapy with the needles they put? Well, they do that. Because when they puncture that area with the needle, they hit a blood vessel that ruptures and releases the blood to that specific area. So it speeds up the recovery, you know. But and that is just like, to me, that blew my mind. I was like, wait, so you're telling me that it is the blood that helps recover all this? <laughs> I was, uh, so you saw, so you see, even the world knows that it's the blood. <laughs> Even the world knows that it's the blood that recovers all things, that restores all things. 
you know, that's what he, so he got to that. I was like, so he tell me it's the blood. And I started rejoicing in the audience. He's like, he's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? I was like, you just said the blood. I got excited. <laughs> so, you know, so it's the blood. If you have an injury, you know, whatever you're going to, whatever you're going through, whatever is injury, you know, if you got, if you're going through, you know, some type of sickness or disease or you're some type of addiction that you have or whatever is holding you back from running, that has you on the sidelines watching everyone else run, I, I encourage you just to release the blood in that area. Just release the blood. Release the blood in that area of your life so you can get back in your race. So you can stop being a spectator and seeing people run, you know? And that's, you got to get back in your race, man. Finish your race. I encourage you to get back in that race, you know? It, it's, it's vital. It's vital. You know, so going from that, you know, the, really the verse me and Pastor were on uh, one morning on, uh, on prayer was Galatians 5, Galatians 5, 7. We go Galatians 5, 7. Let's go to the, let's go to the amp. Let's go to the amplified. Let's go to the amplified. It says, you are running the race nobly. That's not the one I got. Two different amps, I'm guessing. <laughs> okay, I'll read the one I got. It says, you are running the race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? Who has? Who has? We have a lot of people who, who has in our lives, you know. <laughs> you know, who has? Who has told you that you can't do this? Who has told you that, you know, what you're doing is impossible? Who has told you all this? You know, who has told you? You know, just because you got a bad report does not mean that's what you go by. You don't go by that. You go by what God called it. God calls everything blessed. He calls everything healed. You know, so if you're going, whatever you're going through today, whether it is a sickness, a clogged artery, you know, cancer, you know, anything that is, you call it the way God called it. God says you were healed by his stripes. You were healed. You have the healing. You know, that's part of your mindset is that you got to stand from that position, from that place, knowing that you have received that already, that he has imparted you because he says that he has made you in his image and his likeness. God does not have sickness in him. God does not have any type of poverty in him. So if you're going through some financial situation right now just know that it's not hard at all for God to get you a thousand dollars in your bank account tomorrow not even a million dollar go in I say a million it's not it's not hard for God to get you money in your bank account it is not hard at all it is not hard at all that's what I'm saying if, so whatever you're going through if it's an addiction hey speak the word over it speak the word release the blood release the blood you are born again you are made a new person so that old addiction that's trying to follow you you just got to speak to it and cast it out. He says, if you say, if you, whatever you speak to, and you cast it out into the sea, it shall not return. So just cast it out. And it might not, you might have to stand on that confession for a month, two months, three months, four months, six months, a year, but you continue to speak. You continue to speak. Once you stop speaking, now you stop having. Now all that stuff starts coming back. It starts to make it because the enemy comes quickly. He comes quickly, quickly. So as soon as you stop speaking, he is right there. As soon as you stop speaking, he is right there to try to take back everything that you have gained. And that's what I've been on was run your race. Run your race. And if you go to, let's go to, uh, whoo, where is that? Where is that? I don't know. We'll get there right now. Holy Spirit will give it to me right now. But just run your race. Run your race. That mindset, stay in that mindset, that mindset of victory, that mindset of victory. So another thing I was doing was a study on the nervous system, the central nervous system. The, the central nervous system is in two compartments. You got the brain and you got the spinal cord. The brain contains, they say, about 85 billion neurons in it, 85 billion. The spinal cord, about 1 billion, you know, and so what about close to 90% of your neurons are in your brain. And that's why it's important to focus on the thoughts you're coming in, you know, because whatever you are thinking is what you're going to produce. You know, I've said that many over and over. I can't emphasize on that enough. So, so it goes here. So if you want to get some facts here, we'll get some facts here. It's pretty funny. So a sponge has 
zero neurons, just so you know that. A sponge is not a living thing. <laughs> just in case you didn't know, a sponge is not a living thing. <laughs> so a cockroach has one million neurons. A cockroach, a living thing, one million. A cat has one billion neurons. A chimpanzee has seven billion. An elephant has 23 billion. So the largest animal right now here on this earth is not bigger than you. You know, God created us the greatest image in him. So we, that's why he says you have dominion over everything because we are greater than anything here on this earth. You know, greater than anything. That's why everything obeys us. Everything obeys us. Every, that's why I say you came from chimpanzee. I don't see anything lining up with us coming from a chimpanzee. <laughs> we didn't come from no monk. But <laughs> But yeah, so they're doing this. It's like I'm reading this book, right? And they're saying, you know, it's talking about the central nervous system, you know, how it shoots, neurons are going. They say they're now they're testing right now, and that neurons are traveling about 200 feet per second through your body, you know, from your brain to whatever, you know, moving your fingers, you know, it's at 250 feet per second. But then you look at the end of it, and it says open for reassessment on a certain day. So right now they really don't know how fast our body is moving, you know, and I. To me, is it's all in the Word. If you want to know the truth, it's in the Word. You know, it's just science is trying to give us some false teachings about, oh, your body is this, your body. No, you want to know everything about the human body? It's in the Word. You know, so I, said, so I was like, you know, if you want to know how fast our neurons are moving in us, go back to when God created us. Go back to when God created us in Genesis 2-7, where he says he made us from dust. He blew in our nostrils, and then we became a living thing. So if you want to know how fast our neurons are moving in us, you got to find out how fast his word was moving when he created everything. That is how fast our neurons are moving in us. And that's why they will never figure it out. Because I don't, I don't believe there is a test that will even measure how fast he was making all, all the earth. So I say, if you want to know how fast everything is moving in us, that's how fast I believe how fast our neurons are moving in us. Because he made us with his word. So as fast as his words were moving, that's how fast our body. And why do you think the body is such a supernatural thing, you know, when we believe in the word? Why we receive healings, boom, like that. Because everything is moving at the speed of light. Just boom, boom. That's why someone could receive a healing instantly as long as he's believing it. Instantly because our body was made supernatural. It was just made to run, you know, made to never grow weary, he says. Never grow weary, you know. So you're to run and never grow weary. Run and never grow weary. You're to walk and not faint. You can't, you know, I was looking up uh, Usain, well, I know Usain Bolt, right? Everyone knows Usain Bolt? Well, he's thinking about retiring, you know, because he's like, oh, I just don't feel like running no more and this and that. He's like, I've already I got nothing to prove. You know, I won everything, you know, double gold medalist, whatever he was, you know, fastest sprinter in the world. But he's fainting. He's fainting. World Olympic athlete fainting everyone that everyone looked at man this guy's gonna run probably for another three four five maybe ten years he's already calling it quits you know that's why i'm like man you got world olympic athletes out there that just not running no more because they don't feel like it because they think they've made it to the top because they think they've made it you haven't made it to the top yet because <laughs> i know where the top is at <laughs> i know where the top is at <laughs> so that's what i say though is he says that we could run and not grow weary. We could walk and not faint. To me, that just, that blows my mind. You know, that means you could run constantly, just running. In the spirit, though, you got to tap into spirit. You know, you got to tap into the spirit. It's in the spirit where the strength is at. It's in the spirit where, you know, all the power, the glorious power is at. You got to tap into that spirit. If you don't tap into the spirit, you're missing a big, big part. <laughs> you're missing a big, big part, huge part. You know, and just, where was I going with this? This would be good. It would be good. Woo, I'm good. So there's three things, three things that you got to do continually to be a runner. Three things. Three things that you got to do in rep. You got to do this repetitiously. You got to do it day and night. 
day and night, all day, every day, sunrise to sunset. Number one is rejoice. You got to rejoice. <laughs> you got to rejoice. Yeah, you got to rejoice. So to keep that running body, you got to rejoice. That's number one. Number two, you got to pray. You got to stay continually. He says continually be in prayer. Continually be in prayer. So you got to rejoice because he says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He says, for the joy of the Lord is your Come on. <laughs> he said joy is like medicine to the bone. Come on. So I said, if you got something right now holding you back, any type of sickness, just get some joy in you. Get some joy in you. It'll make that blood flow even like a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> you get that mighty rushing blow, flowing blood through you. That Holy Ghost blood. <laughs> So rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. You know, another thing you got to do is you got to be thanks, thankful in every circumstance. You got to be thankful in every circumstance. You know, you're not, and it's, let me stay on that right here. You don't want to be thankful just for what you got right there in that circumstance. You're thankful for what you have faith on. Because faith is believing that you have received it already. So you're not thankful. So when there's a struggle that's coming at you and you got all these things, you're not thankful for the things that you have already. You're thankful for where you are going. You're thankful for where you are going because anybody could be thankful for what they got already. You know, I could be like, man, I'm so thankful for this phone. You know, this is a nice phone. I'm thankful. But that's not faith. I have it already. I'm seeing it. I'm looking at it. You know, that's not faith. Faith is the evidence things hoped for yet not seen. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the that's faith, you know, faith. So when all these things are coming at you, you know, you get a bad report from the doctor. You know, doctor says, hey, cancer levels have gone down just a little bit. Hey, I will rejoice that a little bit because I know much is coming because I know much is on its way. I know that thing has already been healed. I know that thing's already been, you know, if I go to my bank account and says I got $1 in there, I'm like, I know there's a million coming. <laughs> I know there's a million coming, you know. So it's just you got to be thankful in those situations. Like, when it looks bad, everything looks bad around you, just be thankful for what you have faith on, that knowing that God has delivered it to you already, that he's already delivered it to you. So that's what you're thankful for, you know? Whew. Because in Isaiah 41.10, he says, fear not, I am with you. Fear not. So in your circumstance, you should never fear because you cannot have faith and fear at the same time. You cannot have both at the same time. You cannot have both. Whew. Yeah, he says, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Whew. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. We know how to get there. We know how to get there through his son. Through his son. He has seated us up in high heavenly places. High heavenly places. High heavenly places. He said the enemy is a footstool to you. <laughs> he said the enemy is a footstool to you. He said you're high. He said over all powers and principalities. You're over all that. You're over all that. So there's nothing that the enemy could throw at you that could get in you. No, not one. Not one. Not one. How do you do that, though? You continue to rejoice. You continue to rejoice. You continue to run on the word that you are standing on. Don't just stand there and say, God, I hope you do something. God, I, I, I believe your word, but I hope you do something. No. Once you get it and you stand on that position, now you run with that word that he has given you that day. You got to run. You got to run. You can't just stand put and expect God to do something. Because when you move, he'll move with you. Because he says, I am with you. So if you're standing right here, well, he's with you right here. He ain't, you know what I mean? So if you're not moving, you know, he's going he's to be right there with you, standing. You're like, all right, you're moving? When are you going to move? You're going to run today? You're going to run tomorrow? How about right now? <laughs> you know, so you got to run on the word that you have gotten from God that day. You got to run. It's important to run. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you live. You know, it keeps whew, so much things. You know, they say, you know, 
that runners, you know, there's this myth about runners and the natural runners that if they run too much, they get bad knees. Well, that's a myth because there's proven that it strengthens your knees because when you're running, you are strengthening all those connective tissues. So running actually strengthens your connective tissue, strengthens your core. You know, so you can run and never really have bad knees if you do it correctly, though. If you do it correctly, you know, you can't just run without a word. Don't do that now. <laughs> you know, so if you're running and you don't have a word with you, if you're stepping out in faith and there's no word with it, you're going to get hurt. I'll tell you that right now. Because now you're going to try to muscle through it with your own power, and there ain't no much, there ain't much more power. There ain't no power behind you. <laughs> I've learned that. You know, I've learned that. You know, I've tried to conquer things myself, and I couldn't. You know, so if you're going to run, run with the word. Run with the word. Run with the word. Woo. Because he says right here, whatever things you ask for in prayer, believe in you have received. You got to believe that you have received. So whatever you ask for in prayer, you have received it. You got to believe it. So you see, he says believe that you have received. So that means the mindset, the thoughts come before the receiving. And so the believing comes before the receiving. What I, what I say last time was the thinking comes before the feeling. You know, before you have that good feeling, you got to think something good. You can't have a whole bunch of bad thoughts and expect to feel good. <laughs> you, can't have, you can't have a whole bunch of bad thoughts and expect to feel good. Yeah. So, as I was saying, it, it's just amazing how our body is made up, you know. Amazing, you know. So, with there being 99% of your neurons that make your body function in your brain, that means you could talk yourself, talk your body really into anything. You could talk your body into you. That's why he said your mouth is power. You know, it's life or death, whatever comes out of your mouth. Because your mouth controls 99% of your body. So if you want a healing, just start speaking it. If you want whatever you want in life, just start speaking it. You know, that's when I was reading this book. He says a lot of people want to run, want to be good runners. You know, like, oh, well, I want to run. I want to be healthy. I want to do this. And he says, I always tell him, well, just run. Start. You know, the first thing to do when you're, the first thing to do that, if you want to run, the first thing you need to do is just tell yourself, get up and run. If you're not telling yourself, go run, then you're never going to run. Yeah. You know, and that's what he's saying. He's like, first you run, because he's like, people have all these things, oh, well, I need to diet this, I need to do this, take in this many carbs, take in these vegetables, you know, I need to take in calcium pills for, for this, or, you know, drink more milk, you know, to keep my bones healthy. He's like, I always tell him, just start running first. He says, start running first, and then feed your body what it needs. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Grab one word that you're on today and run with it, and then start feeding your body. You, you, you'll, your body knows what it needs. It'll tell you. You know, it'll tell you. Your inner man will tell you. You've got to tap into that spirit. There's a whole bunch of potential in the spirit. You know, that's where all your potential is at, is in the spirit. You know, so just start running, really. You know, that's what it was to me was, I said, I just knew three verses for six months, <laughs> deep in my heart, three verses. But I kept on confessing them, kept on confessing them, kept on confessing them. And he says, you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. So I said, whatever you have in you right now, run on it. Run on that, and it will grow. I promise you it will grow. It will grow. So run on whatever you got. It might be just one word you got from God. Run with it. Run with it. Run with it. Whew. Another thing I looked into was a runner's high. Everyone heard of a runner's high. When they run, they get a runner's high, you know? And so I did a little research on that. I was like, well, what is a runner's high? Is? They say it's, uh, they're convinced, even scientists are convinced that it is hardwired in us, that we, are, we're, we have it in us already. Even scientists think that. And I'm like, well, glory to God, I'm, I know that I have it in me. You know, and I, I explained this to, I was having dinner with, they blessed us over back there one night, uh, Jim and Miss Kay, and it was awesome. And I, I had this revelation, you know, because that's one thing you need to know is that it's a revelation of God that will elevate you to the next level. There's nothing else but a revelation from God that will elevate you to the next level. And one thing I'll never forget was, was uh, Pastor Mark Hankins when he said, <laughs> it makes me laugh all the time when he said, he's like, 
You know, my teachers tried to teach the hell out of me. You know, my, the cops tried to scare the hell out of me. He said, my, my, my parents tried to beat the hell out of me. <laughs> he said, but it was Jesus that loved the hell out of me. You know, so it was a revelation that he got from God that God loved him. You know, and that's one thing that has radically changed me was in Bible college, we had a class on the love of God. And I'll never forget in the beginning of day one of the class, Pastor Danielle says, when you wake up, the first thing you tell yourself for this whole month, before your feet hit that cold ground or that carpet that you haven't vacuumed in about two weeks, <laughs> before your feet hit that ground, <laughs> tell yourself, God loves me. Because it's one thing to know that you love God. You know that already. But once you get the revelation that God loves you, it changes everything. It changes. There's something in the inside just, that just arises. You know, there's something in the inside that starts going. Like, Ooh, God loves me. You know, like, it just starts going. You know, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's been hardwired to us. We know that because he says when in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All old things have passed away all things are brand new so the way i see it is say you went to your kitchen and you turn on your light switch that usually turns on your kitchen light and your garbage disposal light turns on i mean your garbage disposal turns on you're like what's going on in here <laughs> you know i just turn on this this light switch that usually turns on my kitchen light now my garbage disposal is going on like what's up with that you know what i mean <laughs> so what do you do you probably will call an electrician to come and fix that Wacky job that's going on there. Some other electrician messed up, <laughs> which we know that other electrician that messed up in the, us in the inside. Yeah. Adam. <laughs> so that's why I see this. We are rewired when we're born again. So that old wiring system that you had, it's gone. We gutted it. It's been gutted. It's been torn out. It no longer exists in you. You have been rewired. Rewired or in, in the word it says regime. Regene. You have been made with the same, the same genes that he gave Jesus Christ, you have. The same, the same genes, same genetic makeup. Come on, the same stuff. You have been rewired. So if you go look, if you go look at your house, that circuit breaker, this is why I picture it. If you go look at your circuit breaker, your circuit breaker has numbers on the side. Your circuit breaker has numbers, has one through about, usually about 14, 10, however many switches you got. And um, the way I see it is, in your old wiring system, in box number one, this is what I wish I had in the use of work. I like to draw things. <laughs> I like to draw things because I like everyone to see the whole picture. Okay? But in, in the first block where depression used to be, now there's joy in the rewiring system. You know, in that second box where there's sickness, there is healing. In that third box where there was poverty, now there's richness. You know, and that's why I see everything is. It's a whole new wiring system. Whatever used to be in box number one is no longer there no more. You have been rewired. But let me tell you one thing, though. You have been rewired, but you are the electrician of your body. He has, he has rewired you. Now it is on you to flip the switches and figure out what is what now. It is on you. You are the electrician of your own body. He has rewired it for you. Now it is on you to start flipping some switches and figuring out what, what light that turns on. So that's what I see it, you know. Another way I see it, they say in the running body, since we're on the running, in the runner's body, he says their body does not, or their, their neurons are not used to running. So they do not know what to do. So if someone has never ran before and starts running, their body just goes crazy. It does not know what to do. <laughs> I don't know if someone ever started running for the first time and you go home and you're like, oh, man, what was I doing? <laughs> What was I thinking? <laughs> Trying to get up in the morning, you know? Because your body does not know what to do. Your body does not know what to do because it was your first time running. So you got to exercise. You got to exercise the body to get it used to running. It's the same thing in your spiritual run. You got to exercise that faith to get it used to running. You got to exercise that body in the spirit to get it used to running. So it is rewired. They call it in the... They call it in the runners, but they call it recruitment pattern. So, again, I, I always get things in my head when I hear things like that. So I'm like, recruitment pattern? Well, you know, before you were saved, you had a whole bunch of bench warmers. 
You had a whole bunch of bench. Ever seen that movie Bench Warmers? <laughs> you had a whole bunch of bench warmers in your body. You know, now you're recruiting, though. Now you go get those all-stars. You build your dream team inside you. That's what I see. You build the dream team. You recruit people to build your dream team. Everyone knew the 1990s dream team with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Carl Malone. You know, so you got to, that's why I see recruiting patterns. You got to get rid of your bench warmers and start recruiting them champions because you have been born into a bloodline of a champion. You have been born into the bloodline of a champion. So now we got to start recruiting those champions and get rid of them bench warmers that don't want to do nothing. Because, you know, a lot of times your feelings will tell you, I don't feel like going to do this. I don't feel like getting up, you know, at 5 in the morning to go to prayer. You know, I don't feel like, you know, praying right now at lunchtime. I want to eat. <laughs> you know, I don't want to pray during lunchtime. I want to eat, you know. I don't want to pray right before I go to bed. I want, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. I don't want to pray, you know. That's what your body will tell you. But you got to now be spirit dominated and tell your body to shut up. <laughs> hey, you know, because you have power and dominion over your own body. So you got to speak to it. You got to tell it, you know what? No, you're going to listen to me. You obey me. I don't care what you say. You obey what I say. And that's why I see it was you got to, you got to find the switches. You got to flip the switches in your body. You got to recruit the champions because that is what you have been born into now. You now are a champion. You now are a champion. Another thing it says, the more you get in the word, the higher you stay. The more you get in the word, the higher you stay. Because that's what they say, the more you run in the natural, the higher you get. So the more you stay in the word, the higher you get. You know, so you want to, you don't have to go and get no joint off the streets to get high. You just got to get in the word. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to go run 20 miles a day. You just got to get in the word. You know, you just got to get in the word. You know, and the next thing it says here for runner's high was the desire to live. The desire to live. So think about your ancient, like, ancient people, like Indians, you know, that had to, like, run and chase and to kill their food. You know, they got that runner's high that was able to break that barrier to kill that animal. Why? Because to them it was a matter of life and death. To them, well, yeah, to them it was a matter of life and death. But they didn't run after that, you know, buffalo, whatever they were chasing after to kill. They didn't have nothing to eat. So it was a matter of life and death. That's why they got that runner's high. You know, we should think of it the same way. We should have that same mindset, though. It's a matter of life and death. If you don't stay in that word, it's a matter of life and death. If you don't stay in that word, it is a matter of life and death. You got to stay in the word. You got to stay in the word. Day and night. He said, meditate in his word day and night. Day and night, meditate in his word. The next thing was, they say the runner's high serves as a natural painkiller, masking tired legs and blistered feet. Well, we could go to 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. We've been cleansed by the blood. By the blood, we have been cleansed. We have been cleansed. So that painkiller, we've been cleaned. That, that blood has taken every pain in our body, has taken it away. By the blood, we have been healed. By the blood, we have been cleansed. It is by the blood that we receive all things. By the blood. So if we go to also next, if we go to Isaiah 40, 31, it says, we shall run and not grow weary. So this time, when they get their runners high, their legs, their tired legs go away. In other words, your legs go numb. I don't know if you ever ran before where your legs just go numb. You're like, Man, I feel like I could go like 10 miles today, you know? And that's called the runner's high. Your legs just go numb. You just keep running. That four is going to say, I just keep running. <laughs> four is good. You know, so... And in Isaiah 40, 31, he says, we shall run and not grow weary. We shall run and not grow weary. You know, in Isaiah 53, 45, about the blistered feet, when they're talking about, you know, their, it heals their blistered feet when they hit the runner's high. Well, we know that in Isaiah 53, actually it's 53, 4 and 5, 4 to 5, where we have been healed. We were healed by his stripes. So we were healed. So we know all this. We know all this about the runner's high. We've been there. We've been there, you know. The next one we got is find your pace. Find your pace when you're running. Don't look at someone else and where they're at. 
be focused on where God has you going. Stop looking at other people and seeing what pace they're running. Because you're not going to run the same pace they're running. Your pace is going to be totally different. You're both running the same type of race, but they might be at a faster pace than you because they might have worked out a lot more than you already. You know, so don't stay focused on what everyone else is doing around you. Stay focused on your run. Run your pace. Run your pace. Another thing is find a workout partner. Find a workout partner. It's a proven fact that a workout partner increases the endorphins that go through your body. It increases a lot of different things, you know, which is true. Even in the body of Christ, you got sur- you know, you got to surround yourself with faith speakers, people that are going to speak faith into you and not doubt, people that are going to support the vision that you got, that God has called you to do. You know, people are not going to try to call, people are not going to try to, you know, get that calling that God has placed in you, try to get it out of you. People are going to say, you know what? Yeah, I see that happening. I see that happening. You know, people are going to speak faith into that. You know, well, and where you should start is in your family. You're me. What I'm talking about, if you have a wife, if you have kids, that is the family right there that you want speaking life into you. Because they're going to be with you your whole race. They're going to be with you your whole race. Your whole race, you know. And that's what I love, you know, about our kids, you know. And that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm so far. I'm on fire for God. I know what he's done for me. I've applied his word. I ran with his word, you know. And I've seen how good he is. I've tasted the goodness of the land. You know what I mean? I've tasted it, you know. And I've seen because I've seen him heal me with PTSD. You know, I've seen my son. You know, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, when you see your son as a newborn waking up with night terrors every day, every day hallucinating that not even daddy or mommy could, could, could kind of just hold him and tell him everything's going to be okay. That wasn't enough. He'll still be freaking out. You know, it, as a parent, you know, that's hard. It's something hard to go through knowing that he would wake up every night just crying. You know, it's not about crying like something was hurting him, you know, and he would say, there's a snake there or there's this there. Like he would be hallucinating about these reptiles or whatever that were in his room. You know, and he would just hold on to you for dear life, like, don't let go of me, please. You know, and he would say it, don't let go of me. Like, I, I'm scared it's going to get me, it's going to get me. And, like, he'd be, like, trying to climb up all over you and everything. Like, get down, son. I'm trying to hug out, you know. And no matter what we did, we could go up and turn on the lights. We could say, you know what, it's not here, it's gone. But in his mind, he's like, no, I, I still, you know. Like, we couldn't comfort him. But I saw the comfort of God, Jesus, take over in his life. You know, when we, when we got saved, immediately we started speaking life into our children. Immediately, we started speaking life into them. You know, so every time, once, he was about, what, six years old when we got saved, about two years ago. And so for six years, he was doing, every night, I'm not, I can't remember exactly, every night he was waking up with some really bad night terrors. You know, and when we got saved, we started telling him, look, son, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. And greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So there's nothing you could be afraid of. He is there to comfort you. He loves you. He, you know, he's giving you power and authority over everything of this world so that you, you don't have to fear no more. You know, we're talking, we don't have, you don't have to fear no more. You speak to it, and it will obey you, you know. And it, it was amazing to hear, you know. He would just wake up and say, Dad, I had a nightmare, but I spoke to it, and I overcame it. I'm like, glory to God. <laughs> he's like, Dad, I had a night terror, but I spoke to it. And I overcame it. There is no better feeling for a parent than that. There, that. That's more than being an all-A student. That's more than anything else, being the, you know, best baseball player on the team, whatever. You know, that right there just rocked my world. It's like, man, come on, son. You know, he got so radical. He's, he, he is so radical, you know. He, he encourages me, you know, because he almost got kicked out of school one time for using the name of Jesus on post. You know, he almost got kicked out of school. They called him and was like, hey, your son, you know, was witnessing or using the name of Jesus to this little kid, and that's not allowed here on post. You know, and so he came home, and I told him, well, son, you keep speaking. <laughs> I told him, son, you keep speaking. You don't stop. You don't stop. I was like, if they kick you out of school because you use the name of Jesus, I will not be mad, not one bit. Not one bit. Actually, daddy will be happy. <laughs> So, as I said, I've seen some tremendous things happen in my family from me with PTSD to my son with the night terrors, you know, to my wife also with her anxiety issues, 
you know, I've just seen the blood just flow through the house, you know. Just, wow, I've seen some radical things, you know. There was one time where, I think it was, I was there for about three months when Amy first started working at Kmart. And uh, my Tress had gotten sick with with a, a fever. He had like 102.1 fever. And he was crying and crying and crying. I didn't know what to do. It was my first time in a while staying with the kids by myself. And I was just like, he's crying. Oh, my God, what did I do? <laughs> I'm like, here's a ball. Here's this. You know, because balls make him you know, Here's a ball. Get something. Throw something. Just do something. Don't cry. <laughs> you know? And so he wouldn't stop crying. He was crying and crying. So I called him. Hold on, baby. I tried to he didn't stop crying. I don't know what to do. And she was like, have you checked the temperature? I'm like, no, why would I? <laughs> and she was like, well, take this temperature. I checked the temperature. He had a 102.1. And I was like, well, he has a fever. And she was like, okay, well, there's the problem. I was like, well, I know the problem. So I went and got the word. I looked up. I looked up uh, sickness. It said the prayer of faith. I was like, lay your hands on the sick. They shall recover. The prayer of faith, I was like, well, at that point, I was only saved for three months. I was like, well, I know prayer, and I know what faith is, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I had just learned that that month, actually. <laughs> so I was, like, I was like, I know prayer, and I know faith, so I was like, all right, let's put two together. <laughs> so I was like, God, here we go. So I put two together. I prayed over him. Isaiah was right next to me, actually. We all prayed right over him. And when we were done praying, he fell asleep, checked his temperature, went down to a 99.1. No medicine. No medicine. <laughs> no medicine. So I said, I've seen the Word of God work in our lives, you know, radical. You know, like, and now it's, they're our accountability partners, our kids. You know, like, now, like, they can't just say something that's not in line with the Word. I'm like, Dad, that's not faith. <laughs> like, son, you better, you better go to your room right now. <laughs> But yeah, now they're our accountability part. They tell us, like, when there's something that they know that's not right coming out of their mouth, like, Dad, don't say that. <laughs> Dad, don't say that. And I'm like, all right, all right, I won't say it, I won't say it. <laughs> but yeah, so another thing is, you know, you got to feed your body right, you know, the word, you know. This is what, this is our supplement in the morning, you know, every morning right here. This is what we start our prayer. This is what I start my prayer off with every morning, right here. Started off with it, get it stirred up in the spirit, and then just let the spirit take over, you know. But this is my supplement in the morning. It's a good one. It works. <laughs> it works. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. And that's what I'm saying, you know, our race that we're running is a lifetime race. It's like a marathon, if you look at it. You know, it's not a sprint. It's like a marathon. So when you're running, a, so there's, in running, you got two different things. You got aerobic running, which is your long, slow running, which takes in a lot of oxygen. So when you're doing aerobic runs, it's a slow run that takes in oxygen that heals your body. So runners call it their recovery run. That's a nice little slow run, conversation pace that you could talk back and forth to someone. Aerobic run. An aerobic run is a dead sprint. 100 meters, 200 meters, something that you're just going to go all out. Requires a little bit of oxygen. You know, and we know what oxygen is to us. It's the word of God. Life is the word. His breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. <laughs> you know, so we know it is his breath and all that is our oxygen. You know, so our race that means we got to take in our, our marathon. we got to take in a lot of oxygen. It's a slow race. It's just, you know, so it's all that word. we got to take in a lot of word for our race, a lot of word. we got to be taking in a lot of his oxygen, a lot of his word. You know, it's an aerobic run. It's not a dead sprint. You're going to, if you go for a dead sprint, you're not taking in much word, you're going to die out within about 100 to 200 meters. You know, you're not going to, you're going to make that run. You know, and that's the thing. Is that you got to have your eyes fixed on the prize, eternal life, that prize, that reward, you know. If you don't have your eyes fixed on that and you have your eyes fixed on things of the world, you know, totally off, totally off. You know, and the good thing is, you know, I'm reading this book, you know, and it's all these professional runners that give you the input and all this stuff, you know, professional runners that run 10Ks, 5Ks, marathons, ultra marathons, and they all have put their input in, in this book. 
And I'm like, man, we got the prototype. We got the prototype that has been tested in every condition. Every condition. He's been tested with all types of temptation. He's been tested with everything. But he said, no, it is written. I shall know. It is written. So we got to know what is written in our run, in our race. You know, and so we got the prototype. We got what I call the goat. Everyone calls the goat. We got the goat in us. The goat, the greatest of all time in us. You know, so right now, I encourage you that if anything is holding you back from running, that you get up and just rejoice on that word that you have on today. You rejoice on it. You praise on it. You run with it. You know, just run. Just run. If you haven't run, run today. I encourage you to run today. I encourage you to run today. I encourage you to run today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Hebrews 12.1 says we got to run with endurance. So endurance is a long run. We know it's going to be a long, long race. So that means it's that oxygen, that aerobic, it's an aerobic run. You know, it's not a full sprint. So I encourage you all again, just run your race, stay in love. Because if you can do everything magnificently, perfectly fine. But if you do it without love, it profits nothing. It profits nothing. And love is what keeps everything together. Love keeps everything together. You know, that's what I, lo- I love about this church. Everyone is always about loving on one another. Just, what do you need? What can I do for you? You know, that's what I learned was that love is not a feeling. If love was a feeling, 100% of the people in the world would stay married. But it's not a feeling. Love is always, what will you do for me? It's an action. Love is, what will you do for me? What will you sacrifice for me? What will you do for me? What will you sacrifice for me? Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. Come on, that, and he says, you know, I don't know why I'm going into this right now, but he says, you know, love your wife as Jesus loved the church. So that means you lay down your life for your wife, for your spouse. You lay down your life for them. It's no longer about you. That's what we got. We got to get out of the mindset of me, 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 me. You know, I heard Pastor Mark say one time, he's like, God wants to kick the eye out of you. <laughs> you know, God wants to kick the eye out of you. You know, and that's the saying is, get out of that mindset about me, 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 and get focused on others. What, what can you do to help someone else out? What can you do to help them get what they want? Because if you help people get what they want, they will eventually help you get what you want. That's just the way it is. People in the world call it karma. I don't call it that. I call it reaping and sowing. <laughs> you know, you're going to reap what you sow. It's in, it's in the Word. You're going to reap what you sow. So, yeah. Woo. Yes, I encourage you all, really just run your race. Run your race. Run it. They don't grow weary. Go over to God. And that's all I got for you guys tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your mindset always comes before position. Y'all write that down? Mindset always comes before position comes. Amen. If you do, you'll never reach the position if you don't have the right mindset. Love is the ligaments of the body. Holds us together. Binds us together. Amen. I like this. Release the blood in the area of your life that is ailing. Amen. Like acup- acupuncture, what's it supposed to do? Get blood flow to that part that it needs the most. There's parts of our body, we just apply the blood. Amen. I like that. You aren't used to running. It don't feel right, and it don't feel good. I like this, what he said after that. You start trying to live by faith. You aren't used to it. Keep doing it anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. That's strong stuff right there for somebody who only knew three scriptures for six months. Praise the Lord. You know, if you only got three scriptures to stand on, David found five smooth stones. Brother right here had three scriptures for six months. And I don't know, he got more in him now than after that first six months. But brother gets up and preaches and just flowing with the word, the word, the word. Give it up one more time for Brother Roland. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Love seeing everybody run their race. That is our ultimate goal as a church, as a pastor, as a leader, is to see people running the race. And I like when he said this, find your pace. Find your pace. Find your pace 
Quit trying to keep pace with everybody else and do what God's called you to do with the very best that you can do it. Amen? That's your pace. Now, your pace is not going to be a crawl. It's going to be a run. It's going to be a run, amen? You're not walking in faith. You do walk by faith, but you're running a race, amen? So we all have a race to run, and we're believing God that he's going to, that, that, that race is on a course, and his course is set right now to South Korea, and he's going to run into South Korea on fire for God, amen? He's going to go in through there, hallelujah, fired up for Jesus, and we're just so thankful for what God has done in them and their family, and he just, he brought out the whole family that is now changed by the Word of God. Him, his wife, his kids are speaking the Word, holding them accountable. I like what he said, too. Your family is who you're going to be running your race with for the rest of your life. People will come and people will go if you had not found that out yet in your life. But your family is going to be with you forever while you're running your race. They are the most important faith friends and faith partners that you have. So really, at the house should be where you hear the most faith. Amen. Danielle's always picking me up. My goodness, I'm always, I'm tired. I can't get up and run some more. Get up right now. I'm like, praise God. But she is just an encouragement because, you know, if you, how many of you know, if you let, if people, if you let people do what they want to do, they would always do less. But if you got somebody stirring you up, a partner, a workout partner, somebody to go with you, and I thank God that you guys are a faith family going to South Korea. We're going to lift them up again right now and pray over them, and then we're going to pray over this desserts and bind the calories in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. That Butterfinger Delight and that uh, chocolate, uh, what you call it, lasagna and all of that stuff I'm about to go. I'm going to get a little bit of everything. Praise God. And I'm going to run. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glennio, come on up here and let's pray over them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody extend your hands toward them. We believe God with them as they go forward. Father, we thank you they go forward by faith. They go forward running their race. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for the word of God. It is hidden in their heart. We thank you that your word, Father God, will lead them and guide them. They'll always hear a voice behind them saying, this is the way, walk in it. We thank you, Father God, that in all their ways they will acknowledge you and they'll direct, you'll direct their path and you'll make it straight. We thank you, Father, walk straight into the blessing, straight into provision, straight, Father God, into the plan of God and the purpose of God that you have for their life. We thank you that your plans are to promise prosper them and not to harm them, plans to give them a hope and a future. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that their future is bright. We thank you, Father God, that all the good things that you've done so far in them. We thank you, Father God, that they get the revelation, Father God, they've only just begun. They've only just begun. The race just started. We thank you, Father God, in this marathon, they're going to be picking up blessings along the way. They're going to be doing the will of God along the way. They're going to be imparting wisdom and word and revelation into others along the way. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for the love of God that is shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father God, that South Korea will never be the same. Everybody they touch will never be the same. We thank you, Father, that there are light shining in a dark world, and we just thank you, Father, that you'll call all things to their remembrance in the name of Jesus, and the fire they carry will spread in Jesus' name. The fire will spread in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Well, a wildfire will spread. We thank you, Father. Jeremiah said, your word is in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary from holding it in. Indeed, I cannot hold it in any longer. We thank you, Father, that when that word goes forth, it will start. It it will start a fire, and it will, Father God, it will produce results like it's done in their life and in their kids and in their marriage. And I thank you, Father God, for the testimony they are, and I thank you that they'll go forth into all of God's perfect plan, His perfect will that is laid out before the foundations of the world in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen. Give it up one more time for them. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You say, you say, well, you, uh, that is, that is, so. That, I mean, I, I'm just, sometimes I get amazed. And then over the 20 years of ministry, we've seen people come through our, our, our uh, that come up in our youth ministry, come up, we've been able to minister to, and I've been even coached in Little League Baseball and done some things with that have went on into the ministry and still in the ministry today. And it's just amazing to see what God does in lives of people. I leaned over to Danielle and I said, two years ago, the brother did not know where one scripture was. Two years ago, he didn't know where one scripture was in the Bible. Didn't ever read the Bible. Never picked it up. Didn't know the word. Had three scriptures. I said, I'll take those and just stand on them. <laughs> you, you know, and that just goes to show. You, everybody says, well, I don't know enough. Well, you know something. And if you've been around here long enough, you know some stuff that you can stand on. Quit saying you don't know because you do know. 
and take what you do know and take that, run with that, and it will carry you on. And you don't have to know the whole book. You don't have to memorize the whole Bible. You don't have to know Proverbs, Psalms, and all of the things. you got your stuff that you're going to speak, and you, you've always got something to work with. And if you just got, God loves me. Amen. God is love. Praise God. Whatever it is that you, you have, you, that is a great testimony right there. When he said that, I mean, that just blew me away right there. Six months, had three scriptures I could really stand on and run with. And he said, I just run with those. How many of y'all know that is a great testimony right there? To just take what you got and use what you got. Amen. And it's just, it's just a, uh, a definite encouragement to us at Living Faith. Like I said, continue to pray for them. We got, uh, we'll leave about 9.15. We've got 30 minutes of dessert, and we'll just be fellowshipping. I know we like to fellowship around here anyway. So we're going to take up the offering now. And uh, if you come ready to give, go amen. If you need a, uh, I think Calvin's back there. If you need a credit card deal, we can give with that. But you, when you give to this church, I just want you to understand what you're sowing into. You never know when the next is flowing through every person that walks through that door i do not see them as just a guest or a visitor i see them as the potential that god has in them is my, oh man it could be so awesome what god is about to do in you your family your kids and amen so when you're sowing you're sowing into that when you're giving to the church you're giving into the kingdom of god and expansion of the kingdom amen so we just thank God for them. We thank, right, thank you right now. Let's pray over their finances. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that they're blessed. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God, that every need that they have is met. We thank you that as they go forth, provision is in front of them. I thank you in Jesus' name that the blessing of God is good upon them. And we thank you, Father, the blessing of God overtake them. Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, hearken to the word of God and the blessing of God shall overtake you. We thank you that they're going to stay in the word and the blessing is going to continue to overtake and they're going to continue to walk out the blessing in jesus name and i thank you father not only for Roland, but everybody that is partners with living faith that is members of living faith we call them blessed right now their needs are running over they're not running out their finances are running over they're not running out they always have and they never lack in jesus name if you believe that right now shout amen <laughs> hallelujah go ahead ushers praise the lord hallelujah go ahead and give and we will pray oh we, we pray over these desserts we thank you, Father God, that they bless us in the name of Jesus. They nourish our body. They strengthen us for tonight. And thank you, Father God, we sleep good after we eat them. In Jesus' name, everybody say, go get some dessert, fellowship with everybody, Ariola and Mama Nims. And I think they got them lined up. I don't know who's back there.